I'm Robert Samuels. And I'm Tolu Olorunipa. Take us over. Yeah. Uh, our book, His Name is George Floyd, is a story about a man who simply wanted to breathe in America, but ended up touching the world. In this excerpt, we write about a part of George Floyd's story that everybody knows. And a part of his story that he hoped the world would one day know. Memorial Day. It was supposed to be a fun, freewheeling day, an afternoon barbecue, a trip to Wendy's with a friend, a rendezvous with an old flame. And yet it ended with Floyd's face on the warm asphalt on a muggy late spring evening, begging an agent of the state to believe that he wasn't a bad guy. He told officers he could not breathe at least 27 times, and each time he was ignored. The last conversation Floyd had was under duress with an elderly black man he did not know who told him that in this country he could not win. But what was winning exactly? One of Floyd's last aspirations was to, cre to create a place called Convict Kitchen. He had been fixated on the idea of opening a restaurant that would model its menu after prison delicacies made from commissary food. The idea came about one day as he and Courtney Ross were talking about his time in prison and some of the culinary wizardry he had perfected using the bland ingredients available in the penitentiary. Wait, how do you make pizza in prison? She had asked him. Hold on, break this down for me. Oh baby, we take the ramen, we smash it up a little bit into a crust, he'd said. Then we take the ketchup packets and get the sauce going. We cut up the sausage and put the sausage on it and then we put it all on the grate. A grate? What do you mean, like, like a heating grate? Yeah, yeah. When they stopped laughing, Floyd explained how inmates would make chocolate cake. It was a complex formula that involved separating the wafers from the icing and Oreo cookies and mashing up the ingredients before putting them back together with a level of care and precision that bordered on artistry. The product, at least to the prisoners, would rival the best pastries they had on the outside. Floyd had mused about hiring a staff of ex-felons, making it easier for people with records to get their lives back on track. They had joked that the job applications would have only one question. Have you served any time in the penitentiary? Yes or no? He had planned to cover the restaurant's walls with large black and white photos depicting life inside real prisons. There would be mental health services for ex-inmates and resources for people transitioning back to life on the outside. It was one of the many things that he wanted to do when he got his life back together. He would not get the chance. By the time paramedics arrived at the hospital, he was already a corpse. George Perry Floyd Jr., Miss Sissy's oldest son, was officially pronounced dead at 9.25 p.m. Thank you. <laughs> 